morning everybody. I'm Malik from London and I came to visit Kuala Lumpur and meet uh, the great Ronald I, uh -huh. who's the CTO of Cloud Token. We had a C2 and above meeting on 28th of June and a lot of uh, latest updates and information and about the past, present and future of the Cloud Token has been shared to all the C2 and above leaders. So I'm just making this small video for all the people who have joined recently or who are part of Cloud Token worldwide just to understand few basic things about the project because a lot of people uh, don't have the understanding about how the Cloud Token business model works and how the technology involved in creating Cloud Token and the team behind mm -hmm. they are working on something different which we have seen in the past in the market and how we are different from different wallets in the market as well. So my first question will be from Ronald I. Uh, what made you come up with the Cloud Token idea and all, all this? Um, basically, uh, I was invited to participate in this project uh, to help um, leaders uh, that is being burned. Like us? Um, yeah, to <laughs> okay. come up with something that is uh, real. Yeah. And at the time, uh, I wanted to promote my uh, 4.0 um, blockchain platform. Yeah. I needed um, a good project to actually sit, to sit on it. Yeah. And um, well, so I was talking to the leaders to come up <coughs> with their ideas. They were all telling me um, of all the things that um, they were promised. Um, yeah. Of a real trading engine, a real this, a real that, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so, I told them one thing, if you if you want the wallet to be on the blockchain, um, transactions will be slow, uh, it will be expensive as well. Okay. Um, so one of the things is, I can actually put them on my 4.0 platform for their own uh, platform tokens, okay, and we can actually um, connect with the uh, Gen 1, Gen 2 and Gen 3s, which are the uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and the EOSs, right? Yeah. So, uh, we gave it a, a try, uh, and that's, I don't, um, it was a lot of rocky start, um, a lot of things didn't work, uh, yeah. but a lot of patience from the leaders, uh, they know that to build something real, you need um, something real from scratch, yeah. any time. Uh, we were non, we, we are not an MLM company, so we don't even know how to actually build the affiliate. Program. So that was like given to somebody else to do, but the integration between the centralized calculation back to the chain, um, it is always really uh, a challenge. Um, we somehow got through this challenge um, until now. Um, it's fabulous. Uh, we have about four hundred thousand members. Um, we are on 38 different exchanges, um, we are trading uh, on 32, uh, we have over 50 accounts um, with an AUM of over yeah, 4 500 million, okay. so um, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 500 millions we have now? Um, Close. To, for trading? Mm. 500 million, okay. Brilliant. So I want the new people to understand what is the difference between the cloud token model and the utility <coughs> token and the previous models we have seen ICOs and also the IEOs and STOs coming in the market. Most of the projects um, that is uh, available in the market, uh, they are on a ICO path, which means that you come in with your uh, assets and they give you a token which you are able to buy uh, or exchange for. Uh, to be listed in a exchange, whether it's they are themselves or outside. This itself will create a, um, a price surge because of, because of supply and demand, yeah. right? And it's, if it's a supply and demand game, it's very simple. If I were to starve the supply, the demand would go up, bringing the price to, up, to go up, um, which is not really fair. Okay, uh, it's highly manipulatable, just like how exchanges are now with Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever. Whoever has the largest asset is able to manipulate the market. That's what we don't want to do in cloud. That's why you'll never be able to buy cloud tokens from the system. Okay, um, even there are uh, a lot of um, inquiries or suggestions 
from <coughs> leaders that started with us to say that why don't we have a, um, a flash sale of uh, CTOs, you know, like um, you know, we, we limit you to about one Ethereum, okay, to, to get uh, CTOs. Uh, you, you are breaking what you promised. Yeah. So I'm the gatekeeper to actually gatekeep everyone to maintain this particular uh, concept so that there's no way you can buy CDOs. You can only earn it. You can only earn it. Like how Satoshi Nakamoto started uh, Bitcoin in the first place. Can you buy Bitcoins? No, you can only mine it. You have to spend time to do something to help the community, then you, you get uh, rewarded. Right? So, the same thing. Brilliant. I just want the new people to understand uh, uh, <coughs> just a few points about the ORE Big Beta System blockchain technology mm -hmm. which uh, you guys have developed and how it is different from the other blockchain technologies and what were the flaws there and how it is run on the mobile technology as well on the mobile devices. Okay, so uh, my background uh, is in um, architecture design yes. uh, for, for systems. So, I've spent a better part of my life uh, in Hong Kong, Korea, Denmark and China to actually make phones or design phones. Um, the dumb phones at the beginning and then down to the, uh, the feature phones uh, and the ultra low cost, down to the smartphones uh, that we have developed for um, Huawei and, and the rest. So, uh, there are a lot of things that the blockchain generation 1, 2 and 3 they are, they are utilizing technologies from the 60s, 70s okay. whereby it's batch based so in the, it's, it's not that they cannot do it it's that they want to slow down um, the time that it's taken to give out all the 21 million coins, right? Yeah. they purposely do it in this way so that it's not fast but because of the world demand is so great for it, it can it cannot really accommodate. That's why there are other um, uh, consensus algorithms that came out. For example, like Proof of Stake uh, and the, and the rest uh, distributed uh, Proof of Stakes and yeah, all those of things. So for us itself is the the problem itself is the technology that's been used to develop blockchain we looked at all these three issues that we need to solve first is how you store the chain yeah how you calculate and say that this is a real one yeah. okay and the third one is how do you actually tell anyone else that they already distribute data if you look at a uh, Bitcoin blockchain now it's so huge that you can't even fit to a phone yeah. right and the second worst thing is whatever you have you, the next guy needs to have the same. Yeah. So what if this guy is starting from new? Right? You have to sync almost everything in order to start. Yeah. But there are technologies coming out where, like wallet and things like that. They can you sync portion of it. But it's it's not really the full wallet. Mm -hmm. You can't really do a lot of things. You can only listen and not participate. Yeah. So when we developed um, um, this 4.0 blockchain, we wanted it to be really, really simple really really fast using modern technology so one of the things is we uh, looked at uh, what uh, this uh, Nano or Cardano they were developing uh, using block lattice technology block lattice technology enables um, that block itself to be created without previous or prior blocks so which means that I can start from fresh and I can still write and create blocks we took that concept uh, into our uh, system itself. We call it the parallel ledger technology, which means that if I were to do a transaction with you, I can write your, uh, your information and my information, I can write it down, and then we can tell uh, the rest of people that's hearing, just like a radio broadcast, those that hear it will, will write it down. But on his ledger, on, on his ledger, is different than our ledger, which is still fine. It's because when they need, someone else needs to do a transaction with you, all of them will say that, hey, how much you have? Because they know what is the last transaction. Oh, so it, it goes out in a way that is all about broadcasting. So that's the second part of it about how things are distributed. 
In Gen 1, Gen 2 and Gen 3, they use this uh, protocol called Whisper. Whisper is like I connect to a main bootstrap server. It tells me that all of you are on here. Yeah. And I'm connected to all of you guys, of course, uh, peer-to-peer. And it, for me to let you know that I've done the transaction, I have to tell each of you individually. If there's 100 people connected to me, I'll tell 100 times. But in um, BBS or Aura, Aura uh, myself, we just do it one time through um, UDP broadcast. I just send one time. This is the thing. Okay. Anyone that hears it will just write it down. So instead of repeating 100 times, you just do it one time for everything. And it just, it's like a, um, you're throwing a, a pebble uh, in, in a pond, so you get ripple everywhere. So it's like, then it propagates up. <coughs> so this is the second so thing. How it will practically make us better in making the transactions? More, uh, the more phones there is in the network, the yeah. faster it's going to get. So all the phones uh, can participate in the blockchain. Yeah, on the route. Blockchain. Yes, you're you're becoming like an antenna to to. So who will verify those transactions? All the mobile devices. All the mobile devices. Now, the th the thing is the consensus algorithm, right? Yeah. So we use uh, a very neat uh, consensus algorithm. Uh, written by a, a professor. We did not write it ourselves. Okay. It's called proof of reputation. Yeah. So basically, proof of reputation, um, it's, it works like this. Okay, um, we, you know, phones have ports, right? So if, if, like the web browser is port 80, secure port is 443 and things like that. So we go on ports. If you are considered a good actor, you all run on the same port. But if you were to send a bad data that everybody says that this is bad, okay, you are dropped down to a different port. <laughs> and every time you do something wrong, you get dropped down further. But if, if you all know that, the phones listen to only one port, alright? And if I'm not listening to what you're broadcasting, then you're no longer in the system. So that's how we actually uh, block spams and block bad actors from uh, destroying the network. There are many, many different ports in the system and it all depends on your level or ranking. So has anybody ever developed something like that before on the mobile technology? Like OA or Bitbita system? Um, anybody else is Not working? really, uh, but there are um, there are people that's trying to develop um, old technology, trying to port it into the phone. Um, I think um, Hong Kong University is trying to do it, uh, but I, I'm not sure whether they, they have succeeded or not. Um, basically, whatever is running on the phone is a light client, and whatever is running on the servers, they are, they are the main uh, nodes. Uh, we don't have that concept. Everything is on that the app itself to propagate their tasks. Okay, thank you. Now, I just want to ask a little bit more about the Verum software mm -hmm. and Jarvis AI. Mm -hmm. Who created it and how the, so, how, the, how the whole system runs? So, just for the members to understand, yeah. obviously we are doing uh, trading and everything. I started to develop uh, Jarvis without the room um, in sometime end of February. And um, I took it off a Forex engine. Um, as a base and Forex engines have very very bad uh, uh, yield when it comes to um, trading for cryptos so um, what I had to do was to re-engineer it uh, in such a way that uh, it will it will not trade on value but it will trade on quantity the second thing was I needed a um, brain that can let me tell it uh, what is a good trade and what is a bad trade. Yeah. Okay, but how do you know what is a good trade and what is a bad trade? Um, buying at a loss does not mean that you are losing. Mm -hmm. It just means that you are buying at a maybe slightly higher price or slightly lower price. That um, the numbers just don't make sense. But in the market itself, a lot of trades, <laughs> you know, it, it depends on sentiment. So you, you will just go up and down so the engine itself just takes in all this data and chunks out this is good this is bad this is unknown this is good this is bad this is unknown kind of thing so over the number of months and the number of trades as you can see just now we have done a lot of trades right 108,000 
bitcoins traded, the number is staggering just for one. In total, we have done over, I'm not sure, probably 300 or 1,000 Bitcoin trades. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really weird. So all these things are um, gathered onto the brain. And now the brain is actually not too bad, okay? Um, will it get better and better? It will, better and better. it will get better and better. It will get better and better. First thing it, it did was it, it tried to spot um, what is a good trade, what is a bad trade. When can I start to buy in? And when can I start to sell? And when there's human telling me to sell and it's not a good time to sell, do I sell or not? So um, we, we wrote all these things into the trainer and it just went in. So uh, Jarvis' first uh, debut uh, was in February, and we put in about hundred thousand. In less than half an hour, we lost seventy thousand. <laughs> so back to the drawing board. Um, we figure out that because it cannot be dealt <laughs> by logic, yeah. trading is not logic. It's yeah. unlogical. Right? Yeah. But someone just decided to short it, and just short it, right? So, uh, for a better part of two weeks, uh, everybody saw that I was like nearly dead. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to do this. Um, we found out from a friend of a friend, um, a math professor, uh, that he has something really cool. So we went to see him, and he showed us a algorithm that he has developed for a trading house uh, for spot commodity gold trading so he came to us and said that maybe this might work for you so we added his algorithm the calculation uh, which is Varum uh, the first version of Varum into the uh, detection engine uh, before even uh, Jarvis is trading and it can spot what to actually trade with. So basically from then on, Jarvis made good money. So let's say it lost uh, three months, uh, April, May or June, what will be the average you will say your software is monthly. making monthly, what average roughly? It's it's actually varies. Yeah. It varies a lot. Um, I mean the lowest you can go is about three. Okay. Which is, I think, good enough for all the payouts. I mean, per day. Per day, Three percent. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the very, very good days it can be really, really, really high. Just imagine that you can buy your Bitcoin at seven thousand four, you can sell it at twelve thousand. Yeah. Right. But it is not one day. That's yeah. like maybe in the course of four or five days. Yeah. Right. Then you average it out. Yeah. Right. Which yeah is good as well. So basically, um, it's, it's doing that yield. Um, I can't really tell you the yield numbers. It's because I really don't have it. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is, I see the number of assets keep coming up, and uh, there are maximum percentages given up uh, for most of the days. Uh. Really? And even if the market comes down, will it affect the trading? If it's uh, what we call sideways market, yeah. sideways market is very little volatility, but it's all sliding down. Then yeah. not much we can do. Okay. But if it's a volatile down or volatile up, yeah. then there are many many times you can do a trade. Right. Any time there's a spike, yeah. even though it's going down, it's yeah. good. Really. We just need that volatility. Okay. Now about a little bit about the future of uh, Cloud and obviously we we are planning an event most probably end of August or September uh, for 10,000 people and you are preparing a lot of stuff to uh, obviously give new uh, information about the new projects in the world um, which will help to create the ecosystem for the cloud token so ben, basically it's not about uh, more news of what is coming yeah. but it's more about a celebration of what has come yeah. uh, that will be the, 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 the topic or, or the theme it's like we all now celebrate that because we can have a place to use CDOs now. Yeah. Uh, these are the partnerships that we made. Okay. Uh, we will invite our partners. Uh, all of this uh, will come. 
um, including probably all the trading partners that we have, um, all the um, uh, merchants that sign up for our budget program, uh, all will be there and uh, all the partners. So it's a celebration with the members that finally we are here and you can start to use the wallet regularly. Yeah, you will know, also have the payment cards ready by that time. The MasterCards yeah. are already on the way. Um, the API, we really have it uh, and it's being uh, integrated into the app. Yeah, uh, the, yeah the prepaid cards are yeah. there. Uh, by August, the KYC module will be ready for you guys to do the KYC. Uh, but not through our platform, through another platform. Uh, yeah. And once that is ready, um, yeah. you guys can apply for it. And each one that apply for the card, uh, you are eligible to actually uh, get a ticket to come over for the event. Brilliant, brilliant. And of course, from the event itself, um, uh, you can book everything through the CTS. Hopefully, through the site. Okay, just one last question. Obviously, it's taking too much time. Uh, all the merchants who will be accepting CTOs, uh, how will uh, they be provided the facility to convert them into fiat currency? Or the, what, how does the OTC model works for the merchants? Okay, so as you know that, uh, I also say that we are working with uh, we are getting an OTC license, right? Okay. So once that is ready, uh, we are able to do a partnership with the uh, merchants yeah. to do a liquid uh, the liquidity for them. So for example, now you are a merchant and you sign up with us and you get a POS machine or you get a QR code. You are able to log in to the system itself to say that how much you want it to be liquidated. So for example, I only want to keep, uh, let's say, 15% of cryptocurrencies. Yeah. And the rest of 80%, I want it to be uh, liquidated back to uh, um, any currency of the choice. Now. Okay, so that is actually good for the merchant because I am not affected by the volatility of the token. Once, once somebody, once the, the, the customer pay, is already sent to the OTC, it comes out. Okay, so you are not infected at all. Really? Yeah. Just one last question, sorry. What is the vision you see for Cloud Token and creating this community in the next one, two, three years? We are going to be the future of banking and uh, our goal is to be bigger than WeChat and PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody. Thank you for listening and I appreciate your time, Raghunai. And thank you so much for the time. Thank you.